Welcome to the Greenbelt Nature Center. My name is Angel Ellers and I'm one of the environmental educators here in the Greenbelt. And today what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be learning how to make one of the most ancient, dependable, and useful technologies that Native Americans and indigenous people have been making for tens of thousands of years. And the coolest part about this technology is that it is so good and so dependable that the process has barely been changed at all in all of that time. So perhaps from looking at the items in front of me on the table, you can tell kind of what we're gonna be working on today. And it is called cordage. So as you can see, and as you can hear from the word cordage, it looks a whole lot like the rope that is made from cords that we have today. So rope like this jute was made from a machine and yarn like this was also made by machine. But cordage is made by hand and it implies that it was made from different natural materials that would be found around the landscape, hopefully in abundance. So you could use different plant materials or plant fibers like parts of leaves, stems, stalks, tree bark, or roots of particular plants. People also may have used different animal products or parts of animals that they would have brought home from hunt, like sinew from deer, or different pieces of rawhide from animal skins that were processed. Also, other animal parts were hair that could have been used, just like wool is made from sheep hair. Um, different hairs could have been woven into a cord and then used for other products in the future. So I brought out some things to show you how cordage would have been used. And cordage could have been used in a very utilitarian kind of way, like gathering sticks in a bundle and bringing them with you so it's easier to carry. Could have also been used to latch together different parts of the house and the home. Cordage was definitely used to make fishing net and different sorts of things like that in nautical societies. So I made this fishing net holder for this bottle so that I could make a creative planter in my home. Cordage could also have been used to make baskets. So I made this cute tiny little planting basket to hold a succulent just to give you the idea of how creative you can really get with cordage. But what we're gonna be making today is a necklace so that you can wear the necklace and people can say hey that's a really nice necklace where'd you get that and you can give them a little bit of a lesson on what cordage is how you can make it and what different materials you can make it out of so i have some different cordage here that i've made um, out of different plant materials and this nice light green material comes from actually the leaves of the cattail plant that i found in vermont where it was growing a little bit more prolifically than it does here on staten island this nice brown red cordage that I made came from the inner bark of the cedar trees that I found that had fallen in a swamp in New Jersey. This darker green cordage that I made was actually from some old Thanksgiving decorations that people had discarded to be thrown away and I harvested them and gave them new life. But what we're going to be working on today is a cordage made out of a pre-processed material which is still a plant material but it is called raffia, and it's not something that you find on Staten Island. It's actually found in tropical areas in Africa, especially in Madagascar, and it is part of the underneath of the leaf of particular genuses of palm trees, and it is the long membrane underneath the leaf. And so you can actually buy and purchase this material, raffia, from almost any craft store that you can get to. Um, from Michael's or Joann's and it's very inexpensive and it is really easy to use. So I thought it would be the best material to teach you how to make cordage with today. All right, so I have everything set up here to show you the process of wrapping the cordage. What I've done is I've soaked my raffia in some warm water just for about 10 minutes. It doesn't need very long. It's already prepared and ready to go. I have my paper towels to keep things from getting excessively wet. I have scissors for when I need to splice in new pieces to make my lengths longer. And one of the important, most important parts is that I have anchored my cordage to a fixed location. 
because we're gonna be working with tension here and we need to make sure that it is stuck here so that we can add tension to the cord. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have two pieces of strand of raffia. I started with one piece and looped it down so that it can be secured to the tape better. And then the process is called a reverse wrap and it is a little complicated at first, but once you get the hang of it, it is really simple. So we have a right, this is my right and my left, and we are going to twist the right and the left in the same direction. You can pick whichever direction you want. I choose to pick to twist them to the left. So whichever direction you pick, just make sure it is consistent with both sides. So you're twisting them between your fingers and then you're going to reverse it when you wrap them together. So I'm twisting to the left and then I'm gonna wrap to the right. So I'm gonna take the left strand and wrap it over the right. Then I'm gonna hold them and twist them again in that same direction to the left and wrap it again, left over right. So whichever you go, you just have to do the opposite wrap. So I'm twisting again to the left and wrapping left over right. And the tighter you do this, the tighter your wrap is going to be. And depending on what you're using your cordage for, you may want it to be really tight. You may not need it to be very tight at all. So what we have here is a little bit of a longer length that you can see my raffia is about to run out of. So I'm gonna teach you how to splice in some longer lengths so that you can continue to make a long rope of cordage. So I'm gonna grab out one piece of raffia from my basin of water. And as a note, you can see that these two pieces are as long as the other and they might wanna be spliced together at the same time, but you wanna stagger your splices because if I put in two new pieces right here, then that would actually be a weak point in my rope. And I want the rope to be as strong as possible throughout the entirety. Okay, so when you are splicing in pieces, you wanna keep the amount of pieces that you have the same. Okay, so if I have two pieces on my right and two pieces on my left, I'm gonna to wanna to keep it that way. So I'm gonna take one piece and just lay it right in the crease here of where the other two lengths of raffia are and pretend like it's been there all along and just twist it in. You can see that length extends beyond and I'm going to twist my left over my right again and pretend like that new piece of raffia has always been there. And you can see this little flag of the back of that piece is there, but that's okay, because we can clean it off when it's all done. So I'm going to continue to twist both to the left and wrap left over right until I decide that I want to cut out that old piece, because that at this moment, I have three on this side, but I always want to keep it at two. So I'm gonna take my scissors, cut off this shorter piece that I was replacing and just discard that piece. And now that splicing is all done. But you can see that I'm gonna to wanna to splice in that new piece on this side as well. So now would be a good time to do that.
So the type of ne necklace that we're gonna make together today actually requires that we have double the length of cordage that we would need to get around our necks because we're actually going to make cordage out of the cordage that we've already made and do what's called a double reverse wrap like that. Okay, so I am done with my double length and I'm just going to make a basic knot just like I was tying my shoes, that very first knot you make, just to secure it. All right, now what I did was I took my length of rope and I doubled it over itself and I made one of these simple little loop knots because what I want is this loop, this is how my necklace is going to close. So now I'm going to take some tape and I'm going to reverse wrap these into each other, just like that. It's the same exact process you just did with your single strands. And now I'm going to do it and make my necklace double as thick. So I'm going to take this right up here. And it's the same exact process. twisting each individual strand in the same direction and passing them over each other in the opposite direction. So what we have here is a double reverse wrap cordage because there are two strands, so it's double. It's also double as strong, double as thick, double as tight, okay? And when I've reached the end of this, I'm just gonna tie them together with some very basic knots. Again, just like tying your shoe. And now would be the time if you wanted to put some sort of pendant on your necklace that is thick enough to loop around there. Take all my tape off and you can see what I've made. Okay, this is what we have with this loop and this frayed end. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a ball with a knot or multiple knots on this end so that that ball can loop right through the back and hang nicely as a choker around my neck. scissors cut off the frayed ends and I think I'm gonna go for this without a pendant because I think it's beautiful just the way it is and as you can see I can open up that hook have my ball pass the ball right through and there we go I have a choker that will always remind me of this lesson and I'll be able to take it with me wherever I go Thank you so much for joining me today and allowing me to teach you a little bit about the ancient technique of making cordage. If you enjoyed this program and you're interested in some more virtual programming from the Greenbelt, please visit sigreenbelt.org for more Greenbelt at home. Thank you so much and we'll see you then.